Welcome to the Trading Lounge and the Day Ahead Report. And uh, here we're looking at the uh, US 30 and uh, where we are at the moment, um, two hour chart, and we're looking at uh, wave three uh, coming up from wave two here, all the way up. There'll be five waves in that, and we're looking at this being wave one up to here, wave two, wave three up to here. So in wave three here, then there'll be wave four and wave five to make the top of wave three here. So still a fair bit to go, but it's just a matter of navigating uh, various uh, price points along the way. Um, so in this current uh, section where we are now from wave two here to wave three here, we may not make it up to the uh, 13.8 on this one here, uh, but it um, uh, looks like we've got wave one, wave two, this is all part of wave three here, wave four and wave five here. So we're looking at um, another small little five wave structure in here. And this will take this so 13,700. So we'll see a correction across there. The main levels here, though, are the Fibonacci numbers one, two, three, five and eight. So that's 100, 200, 300, 500 and 800. It's a profit taking number, uh, so we'll see a larger correction there, and that'll be the 3 4 there. But if we drill in closer to this little one here, that would sort of leave us um, having a correction. The market's probably on the Thursday. Um, we can look at the SP 500 uh, on a closer scale here. So we're looking at um, same thing again the third wave up through here, and we've got a little five wave structure unfolding through here up for the one, back for the two. And the third wave is the one, two, three, four, and five for the third, the fourth, and the fifth here. So this little one here should keep us in positive territory for the time being. This is actually up for wave one and back for wave two and up for wave three. If we go into a smaller time frame, a 20-minute chart, we'll be able to see that a bit closer. So based off the top of group two here, the 1480 here, you can see that we've got up for wave one, an A and a B and a C for wave two here. So this will be the third wave moving up through here so we can expect a um, uh, a corrective pattern uh, that would be the one two three four five so we can expect um, so one two three wave four and then wave five up into maybe the 1495 or 1493 somewhere up there if the extension uh, is in wave three here that means that wave one and wave five will be about the same uh, time and size so um yeah so that should give us a little bit sort of positive um into t tomorrow but um then we we have to kind of expect um correctional patterns to uh to unfold uh there the uh the australian market as well the there's a couple of ways to count this but the one of the one of the important things is that we can see that the uh that just i'll just get on to the um the cash here for a moment we can see that the price has touched on the 4800 here and uh was sold off there and sold off on on uh on more of higher volume in the previous day so there is sellers there so we can kind of expect that um you know from this point here we can count this up as the 1 and the 2 um the 3 and the 4 and the 5 to this point here what normally happens is that we'd see a sort of a, a sell-off uh, from here and then a push higher from here. So that's one possible uh, way. This, this, um, this, the other, the other little way here is by seeing this little pullback in here. If the support holds, then we'll see another little push up through here, then a correctional pattern. Uh, from here and the the reason I mentioned that for is just depends on how you count this because if we take this from say wave three here we instead of having the a b and c here we could have the a and the b and the c to hit this point here so then this would actually be up for wave one this would be across for wave two all of this would be the third wave this would be the fourth wave and then we'll see a fifth wave move up but the fifth wave if it moved up would pretty much only go into um into the subgroup one area through here the 10 20 and 30 uh, area through here and then we would see the uh, corrective pattern uh, come back 
uh, in here in line with the S&P 500 and the Dow that I just mentioned in their wave counts, okay? So, um, so this may make a new high here, and if that is the case, then we can expect this to happen. Uh, if this doesn't make a new high here, then we can expect the the A, B, and C to come back in, in here a bit further. So as long as really the, the 47.50 holds here, then you can look to go uh, long above that there. I'll just see if we've got a smaller chart here. And that does seem to be um, a, a very strong possibility because we've got this move down here in three waves here. So that means we should be making a new high above here. So the support on the seven on the seventy two here, the seven seven two, and as I mentioned, this this number is important, and we'll be facing that in the Dow Jones shortly as well at thirteen thousand seven hundred and seventy two. Um, so it will play out strong here. But the larger the correction is here, the more support we'll have once the market comes back and tests it uh, a little bit later as well. So um, yeah, and also. Base metals are, are reasonably uh, are strong and positive. They they will correct, and we'll have a look at those now. But the, the just be, the fact that they they're going to be positive in the future um, uh, helps support the current uh, bull market that we have, and we are in one, and we expect it to go um, higher as well. Um, as I mentioned before, it's just a matter of navigating certain uh, price points. But let's have a look at the uh, copper market. So with the copper market here, we've got um, we've got a couple of positive things here, as we mentioned yesterday as well. The first main one is is this A, B, and C correction here, because that's in three waves. Then we can expect further highs above here um, at some point. Now, when I say some point, we may get this A, B, C here may just be an A wave. We get a B wave and a C wave, and then we move up, or we can move straight up through here. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky, and you just need to be mindful of that. But that's one of the good things about Elliot is that um, is that when when we do see uh, a move back down like this in three waves or a three wave correction, we only know it's three waves because we move further up here, overlapping the the A wave here. But just knowing that there, just seeing that. You know that really opens the door for new for new highs. So you know that's pretty sort of exciting news, I reckon. Um, now, yesterday we talked about um, having five waves up to to this point here. Well, I investigated that a little bit further, and it's really only wave three up until that point there, and this is wave four, and then we've got little five waves here to make five, which would make wave one here. So. Um, uh, from wave one here, we'll be looking at an A and a B and a C coming back. I'm not sure how far it'll come back, but uh, this is the main volume area here, and this is a lower level of support here. So some type of correction from the 370, 372 area, from probably this old high here. Um, yeah, and then once that's completed, then we'll see uh, a further move to the upside there. So what that will do is that will support the material sector moving up and uh, also the Australian dollar as well. So, um, and also be all the ASX as well, um, depending if the banks are going to be dragging uh, that down as well, um, because the uh, material sector, uh, say BHP and finance sector, Commonwealth Bank, are going through a sideways correction. They've, they really only had their sort of first swing low um, the Com Bank is sort of in its second sort of swing there, but they are in corrective patterns, and then they are not complete. Um, so um, it's just you know it's just time. But anyway, this is a supporting factor for uh, further upside there, and we've also got um, uh, crude as well pushing up through here. Um, we were looking at um, uh, the 9650, which is this little level through here uh, as the target, and we can see that. Um, uh, that's played out uh, quite nicely, and you know this is this is um, a typical overshoot pattern here, where the market comes up to this level, doesn't react at the level, but just goes straight through. So that being the case, an overshoot pattern normally swings back down to the the same distance above will be as as below. So we can expect some type of correction ac uh, across this. Uh, level here so some softening here um, but as as always there's going to be a um, an influence from indices uh, here as well um, but one of the positive things that I wanted to look at here is the um, is the Brent 
market here. Um, we've got support on the 1100, which I've been, which I mentioned last week. But what, what's important here, that three wave correction that I just pointed out in, um, in the copper market is also here as well. So we've got this A, B and C here. So, uh, and now we're getting an impulse wave here. So we should make new highs here. So we should be going further up on, uh, on the uh, on on WTI as well, the Western Texas. So um, that's that's um, it's all good news. Just checking here, what I've got. So yeah, so it does sort of place us in this situation here where we're looking for this is Western Texas looking for wave C up here or wave three. So it, it's probably starting to appear more like wave three now than uh, wave C. But we'll do a little bit more work on that. The um, the gold market, not a lot of change in here. We understood that um, the other day we had this three wave correction here and once again, based off that, uh, we should be making a new high here and we're starting to see that. We've got the classic trading levels pattern here and the classic trading levels pattern is the coming up and um, finding resistance, then coming down, finding support, then creating the first high above the level and then retesting it. So it's retesting the 1690. So the 1690 has been retested, so we should see further upside here. Um, I was playing around with a little bit of different different labelling here just so I could sort of <clears throat> get a bit, a bit better idea of it. Um, you know, it was going quite well. We had wave one here and wave two here and five little waves in here for wave three and we were looking at wave four here um, and then we started to move off nicely but then we got that spike there so that's the trouble with leverage products you, you get some sort of you know headline driven news and weird things happening so I thought well you know I can label all this in, in a corrective manner but realistically if that spike hadn't occurred there then that would be the wave four and then this would be up for one back for two up for three here up for three to here, then the A, the B, and the C for wave four here, and then wave five up to up to here. So this is all wave five up to here. So there is an extension in this wave uh, from wave four to wave five here. So what that means is that um, well, the market's you know, reasonably quite strong because we've got this move here for wave one, and that's what it is. And then we've got this one here, which is expanding further. And then the fourth to the fifth here is expanding further. So what we're actually looking at here is we're looking at a trend that is expanding to the upside. And, um, you know, we the simple reason is the medium level here, six, 1650, being above that creates a positive um, environment. And we were looking to be long above the 1672 here. Um, and, if, and, and if people are, then that's fine. Then, um, you know, either take profit into the 1700 here or um, or just wait, because I've got a feeling that, um, that this is going to pan out with some type of correction across here, but eventually finding support here and moving up in line with stock. So let's just see how we go with that. But um, after we get some sort of correctional pattern here, and if and if we and when we find support here, that would create the next long uh, trade for their uh, such uh, and silver's much the same as well. It's um, it's looking at uh, five waves up as well from its previous low down through here. So uh, we're looking at one, two, the three, the four, and the five up to up to here as well. So uh, once the uh, once gold finds its uh, high close to seventeen hundred, then we'll see the top here. So we should see. Um, we should see this, you know, come back and retest the 32 in due course. If it's not going to do that, it needs to find support on 32.30. So a nice solid support on that, not just trading above it, but, um, you know, developing and not having a correction there and then developing support there. And if that's the case, then you want to move straight up to uh, 32.50, the midpoint there. But otherwise, uh, the 1700 on gold would see the silver uh, move back. Let's have a look at um, at the forex market. Starting with the uh, US dollar here, um, we were looking at um, uh, a five-way structure up here for the wave C here in terms of the one, the two, the three, and we had this little A, B, and C for the fourth here. And we were looking for a push uh, up here, making a new high here. Uh, that wasn't the case. We've, we started to do that, and then we've had announcement from uh, from Japan and uh, also from. 
uh, Germany last night with the with the uh, with the zoo. Uh, so um, it's been headline driven. Um, but as I mentioned with gold as well, when it had that sort of sharp move down through there as well, I still think we need to consider this as a fourth wave here. Yes, we encountered as corrective and, and a whole lot of things, but um, uh, it's it's it is in three waves. And um, that means that we could still make a new high above here. So we still may need to see this play out. And I think that's the case. So what we would probably see here is up for wave one here, back for wave two, three, four and five. That's a real possibility. That would see obviously the euro uh, to the downside further. Uh, so um, yeah, so we just take a little bit of a look in, in this one here if I've got it here. Right, okay, so this, just to recap here, just from looking at this low point just here, um, and this wave one up to here, that should have five waves in it. We're on the hourly chart here, but if we break that down to the five minute chart, we can see from this low here, we've got this wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and wave five, which is really quite nice. So after an impulse wave becomes a corrective wave. So this looks like it's in five waves as well. So it would probably be an A and a B and a C across here. But once it's completed, we should see uh, we should see further upside there. Um, the only thing that I can see that we've got a problem with that is that, um, uh, let me just check here, an A and a B and five waves for a C here. So an A and then an A and a B and a C for the B and a C wave down here. So it could could possibly come lower. So I think just treat it while it's under the AD treat this as a negative, um, but as soon as it's above the AD and support, treat it as a positive, and that way you'll be able to um, to work the euro as well. So if we have a look at the euro here, that would be at 133 here. So while the um, while the US dollar is under the 80, uh, and this is above the 133 here, then you can treat this as positive here. In terms of, this is also headline driven as well. We did put charts out for this as well as a possible uh, wave through here but this more of a um, you know, a triangle merging here you can see this is headline driven here so but it's still within its trading range so to speak and it is corrective um, we just don't know if it's going to push down here a little bit further as we mentioned before or we've got our triangle pattern completed now and we'll be pushing up so in pushing up here support on top of 133.30 uh, and you know, nice solid support on that is is a reason is the step up. You know, the the midpoint's going to run into problems as is Group Two here, um, as the as the supply sellers are coming, you know, moving down through here. So you know, it's going to be a little bit sort of tricky. So don't rush in. Just allow it time to. Um, you know, to really establish, mature and establish itself, um, you know, either on group one here or resistance under the uh, 133 here. So not much cooking here at the moment, but um, uh, not to lose sight of this because, um, you know, markets are trends and corrections and this is a correction and it's a nice big one so it's the foundation for the next trend so um you need to you know this is where people fall asleep they look at this corrections here and they say oh this is not what i want but um you know the it, it, it is what you want actually and um you need to uh slap yourself and uh, stay awake uh, at this point and um you know and start to scale in but you just need to work out if this 133 is going to become the support support or the resistance um, just yet. So that's something that we need to focus on over the days ahead. The um, the Australian uh, dollar here, uh, we were looking at um, this being the bottom of the C wave here and it, 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 it panned out that we were correct, but it, it could have gone the other way as well. But the, but the main point is, is that, um, you know, it, it's, it was above the, um, the 105 here as, as support. Um, and it's pushed up nice, nicely through here. So we can count this as wave one and wave two and the third wave in here. This will be the fourth wave. This fourth wave may be a little bit small yet, but because wave two was complicated, the guideline of alternation would have wave four as a simple uh, wave four and pulling back to the uh, to the support here, one, 105.50 is, is good. Um, so we can expect uh, a, a push up through here to make a new high here. So we'll get a five wave structure up through here. 
And then once we've got our five waves up here, may not get to the 106 because it just missed it here as well. There'll be sellers there. But um, if we get these five waves here, then we'll get a counter trend in three waves and then we'll see further upside through here. So, um, you know, if you're scalping, it makes no difference. But um, if you're trying to glean a, a longer term position, then um, this will be this will be interesting at this stage here. So even if we do get the five waves up through here, which we should, um, then the support should really come back in, you know, around the midpoint here, even though that the, the 61.8 retracement level would be sort of lower in a, in a in a, in a way back down uh, in, into this sort of area through here. But I would imagine that uh, if it does break up through here, then it, this will become a, a reasonable support there. I'll just... Um, just bear with me a little bit. I was just trying to get in there intraday level here and have a look. So this is just a five minute chart here. So this would be the top of wave three here. And this would be the A, the B and the C here for, for wave four. So um, uh, look, um, it's it's moved up. So you know it would be nice if it got into the group two area here. That would be a sign of strength. It's reacting at that at this stage. But I guess if the 10560 became a nice tested support, you could find a, a way to glean a small position in there. And if it did move up into the 65 after that, then glean another one and so forth up uh, up through here uh, as the wave five should make new highs above here. So we could look at 10590 or something like that. Um, but um, if that one, if if you get in there above the above the sixty, uh, then uh, if the sixty becomes the retested resistance, then you need to get out. It can come through the sixty, um, but you know on the retest, if it fails the retest and then rolls over, then you want to get out. Then okay. So, um, but uh, yeah, look, as I mentioned with base metals, the, the copper market, this is, is offering a, a stronger side to the, up, the, the upside. So, um, you know, the Australian dollar and copper can have a quite a strong relationship. It does, it does fluctuate, but kind of averages around the sort of 60, 80 uh, percent mark. So, um, yeah, all good. All righty. Um, yeah, just one other thing here, too, is the, um, uh, is the, Shanghai, the, the Chinese market. Oh, we've also got CPI figures coming out of um, uh, uh, today as well for the Australian market. Um, so this is the Shanghai market here. So we've had this nice this nice push up through here, okay? So, and I've sort of talked about this last week, I think, but some stage there. But the main point is, is that a trend has got a beginning, a middle and an end. And um, we could see that it was ending through here and the 2300, uh, which is roughly about about here, um, you know, we can expect this to be into a corrective mode here. So the reason I'm mentioning this four is because, you know, this will line up uh, for the 4,800 uh, on, on our local market. So, um, yeah, they're just, it's just a bit more sort of pressure there that, that hasn't really come in as selling yet. Well, it has on this bar on yesterday, uh, this little sort of sell off here coming through there but I can you can see that we're starting to get the the market's uh, starting to creep now it's getting overlapping wave structures here so the, there is weakness here so we can expect some sort of you know correction through here but once that's completed then we should see further upside there so um, this will you know have influence over the Australian market so just sort of lining all the ducks up so to speak alrighty well um, Okay, that's it. Um, just one other thing as well. Um, this year we're going to be working with, um, uh, with we've been working with GFT, we we'll continue to work with GFT. We're also going to work with uh, IG Markets as well. And we're also going to be working with Halifax. And uh, the reason for working with Halifax is that they're more of a full service broker. And we have many clients that don't have uh, time to trade for themselves. Uh, so Halifax will uh, send them an SMS message uh, in the morning to see if they would like to take the robo trades. And if that's the case, then they will place those trades and manage those trades uh, for them. Uh, so that that's um, quite a nice little sort of service there. Uh, so you can contact us for that. And um, and the IG markets will just give us a um, a second uh, platform to to work with and. Uh, 
and perhaps offer us uh, other stocks um, to uh, work with as well in terms of the product list. And they also got a DMA and the market maker there as well. So um, we'll be working with those three uh, companies. Now, the other thing is too, is that um, these these uh, companies have, um, uh, because we send our clients there, we recommend them and so forth, they like to give us a commission. And um, uh, so what we thought we would do is that um, we haven't got it totally sorted out yet, but um, if they pay us a commission, uh, then we would like to give that back to you guys. Um, and the way that that will work, and we haven't got it quite figured out yet, but um, we thought as um, as a first step we could... Um, uh, give you some sort of cash back on the subscription for Trading Lounge. So I don't know what that will be, maybe $50 off each three months or something like that. But um, we haven't got it worked out. But just wanted to um, to point out that and mention that um, they want to pay us a commission. So we'll say thank you and we'll um, pass that back to, to you guys. Um, so we're just trying to figure out a way to do that. So anyway, we'll we'll let you know by uh, email for, for those things. Um, yeah, alrighty. Well, uh, cheers and uh, good morning and good luck.